How you doing everybody? Hopefully you're doing well. Today we're going to be painting this matte um, Mercedes Benz. I think, I believe the code is 297 and it's a matte finish. We have finished this with 800, um, the whole thing with 800 and then gone over it with Trisac. <coughs> Excuse me. Whew. And uh, we got just a little bit of base right there another little bit of base right here and I'm going to try to keep it really 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 small um, I don't want to bring base all over the place because um, I mean the the finish on this already it, it's kinda I'm not really happy with it I don't like it at all um, from factory it just looks kinda cloudy and uh, you know what I'd rather not get into that so I'm gonna do my best to stay underneath this body line and then here, stay underneath this body line. There's some chips there that we're fixing. And then we're gonna try to stay away from the hood. I've done a sparrow card, the color looks great. I did a sparrow card yesterday. What up? A little tip for you when you're doing uh, matte cars. If you can, do a sparrow card the day before you're going to do it so that that sparrow card has time to settle, has time to go down to its proper shine level. And uh, that way you'll know engage you know if you're doing a good job with the shine or not this looks perfection we got the color is on and the shine is on it's great looks good um, I mean we're not really worried about the color anyways because we're going to be blending so anyways that's a little tip for you when you're doing a flat color um, it, it works really well because that way you'll know that this, this this is dry and this is not changing as much. We're going to not put any color over here. We're just going to put color here and the rest of the bumper. Try to stay away. These don't match from factory to begin with, so I don't want to make it worse or I mean attempt to fix it. Um, so that's what we're going to do there. Little repairs over there, and uh, let's see how it goes. I'm gonna walk you through a lot of uh, you know simple stuff, stuff that most of you already know, but uh, it's worth mentioning. Uh, wheel cover is very important. Uh, these are made by I don't know RBL I think. Yeah, RBL made these wheel covers. I like to use fresh ones every time I paint because you know they're not dirty, they're new, and uh, they're you know they they're not gonna give us any problems. I would recommend always, you know, uh, using new ones. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to blow it off really well. We're going to blow it off really well. Take this up as well. So we're not having any, any open spaces. Now one of the keys to getting a clean job is to make sure that the tape is properly taped down. You don't have no holes. You don't have no uh, nowhere for air to kind of bounce inside the car and then come out carrying a whole bunch of crap. So that's why we're going to make sure that all your tape is taped down. And if the car sits overnight and the tape hasn't been pressed down properly, it will lift. Even when you do press it down properly, sometimes it lifts. So you want to make sure that we get it all nice and tight. Because um, we don't need any loose ends. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to blow it off. Um, I obviously use my Motivated Painters blower. I'm going to blow it all off. And then I'm going to wash it. Then I'm going to blow it off again but using the uh, neutralizer AC which is an awesome uh, tool to get rid of um, static all right here we go So, 
obviously you can't polish obviously you can't polish this uh, finishes right because uh, it's flat since you put a polisher to it it'll go shiny so you gotta make sure that you're doing you have to make sure that you're doing everything you can to make sure that this job comes out clean I'm gonna wet this really well be sure it's so so it's really 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 wet and I'm gonna stick to one part of the panel get it wet completely then you're gonna use the wet rag and wipe it as you're wiping you want to make sure that you're looking at it sideways you're looking at it straight on because you want to make sure that there is no sand scratches that are going to show up that's very 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 important make sure it's extremely clean okay so we're going to use the other side of the rag now for the rest of the panel sure it's nice and wet make sure not drop in the rags of course like me don't be like me and that's okay to put a little bit of pressure when you're washing that's uh, something that I've noticed over the years to put some pressure when you're washing. Not fast, but you push hard a little bit. Because that way, you're gonna make sure that you're not just gliding over the panel. You wanna make sure that you're getting all that dirt from the sand scratches out as well. paper as well you can do it while you're paint, uh, washing the panels or you can do it after you wash the panel just go over one quick time over your paper to make sure that if there's any loose dust that it's not going to screw around with you beautiful all right, we're nearly done here. Okay. Can never be too clean. I'm gonna use my tape thing to tape up that. Then when you're done with it, you're not working an aluminum car like that one. Yes. I'm always scared that I'm gonna drop it because sometimes I do drop it. But so now we're clean. Now we're going to do the neutralizer AC. That's clean already, and uh, I think that's about it. So remember what I always tell you: when you're tacking, you want to do it in one direction. Throw everything to one direction, okay? All right, this is Gabriel. Just wanted to jump in here and uh, give you a little bit of, of a voiceover. I really miss doing voiceovers, actually. So I thought, hey, I'm gonna jump into this video and just <laughs> warn you 
that I'll probably be talking a while. And also that those thinner cans are empty and open. I've been sitting around for weeks, so there's nothing in there. So fear not. So um, obviously keep the job clean. Like I um, like you see is you can't polish this obviously. So um, as you can see there, like I always tell you guys, like I've always taught you. Um, since the beginning of my video, always try to get all the dirt, push it all towards one direction so you know where it is, so you can clean everything properly, right? Um, with this neutralizer AC gun, you are supposed to um, tack in front of it and the AC gun behind it. So that's what I like to do. I like to make sure I do it properly. And then I just like to, you know, do one last pass without the tack cloth. That's just the way I do it, though. Um, it works for me. It works really well for me. Um, I want you to um, just take a look at what I'm doing. And uh, because whenever you're, obviously, this job is um, fairly simple in the way that, you know, there's not much curves to it. There's a little bit of curves, but you have to make sure that you're, you're blowing everything out you, you're completely I don't know how else to explain it but just be extremely careful and also when you're tacking try not to move too fast because the faster you move right the more static that you create so tr always try to move slowly and kind of you know press down a little bit on that tack cloth as you can see I'm brushing things off brushing things off kind of so now um, I'm obviously going to just go over the whole job, you know, just to make sure that there's no lint or nothing that's just sitting on top. It's truly, truly, truly important. With matte finishes, you have to do that. By the way, my name is Gabriel Marino, and uh, I, I run here. I run here. <laughs> I started this channel a while ago. There's a little bit of background on why I started this channel and stuff like that. Get to know me. Um, and uh, yeah, this is more of a container. Don't forget to subscribe and like and enjoy this video. I think it will be very, very useful and very valuable, even to the people that don't spray PPP. I'm spraying PPP and I'm spraying the ceramic clear, ceramic global clear. And this is a, a shade of SEO. So for this job, using my uh, Wacom Motivated Painter Special Edition HTE base, which is high transfer efficiency, and I love this gun, I seriously do. And it's a 1.3, and it's a uh, cool thing about it is it weighs 360 grams, which is great for me. I'm a short guy. When I'm doing over a hood, it means a lot. Another cool feature is you can change the. Uh, all the gauges you can change them to PSI to bar whatever you want I'm gonna be spraying at 25 PSI okay so the video I showed you a while ago from the Wacom guns that was for the HVLP version this is the HD version which I told you is a high transfer efficiency I was over in Italy last week and um, um, I got some videos that I want to show you that I made over there and it's pretty cool um, I had to I got the opportunity to meet the owners and see the people that work in the factory anybody knows me you know like I go down roots and I love to talk to the people that actually work and make the product so it was a beautiful experience to actually be there uh, but this gun is really nice now watch the angling on my gun. Going to be spraying down. So I want to stay away from the hood. I want nothing to do with the hood, all right? Nothing to do with the hood. Here we go. So I do want to point out that here I'm not going full, full, full trigger. Um, one of the old guys that you know, one of the one of the people that I've learned from was always like, you know, try to use your trigger, try to use your finger for painting. Here, I'm going to try to stay away as much as I can from this one. Cool thing about this gun, it lays it down so smooth, so nice, that I can put it on a little bit heavier on the first coat.
great. Okay, so we're gonna mix the uh, matte clear now. We're gonna do FCO2 Global Ceramic Clear. And that's what we I use all the time when I'm doing a, a flat car or a matte car. Um, so you can see in the matte playlist, they're all using the same clear because it just works so well. So I really don't want to run out of clear. So I'm gonna mix 30 ounces, you know, and uh, that should get me through one coat. Because you gotta put this stuff on nice and wet you gotta put it on how you want it to look like on both coats so it's very 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 important that you do that I'm gonna put the work order number there we go okay so we're gonna mix it in here then we're going to strain it through there I'm not doing the little uh, cup trick on this because uh, this stuff's heavier so I don't want to screw anything up so first things first that you want to mix this um, very accurately so you want to make sure that you replicate the shine level and all that stuff regular clear you know it's a little more lenient but with this stuff you kind of want to make sure bro why you shake so much sure. stop shaking bro as accurate as you possibly can Take it easy on the coffee, man. So that's the clear. Then we put the flattening agent, which is this one. And I'm going to open this up and I mix mix it inside. I mixed it yesterday, but I'm going to mix it again. You always want to make sure this stuff is mixed properly. Or else you might run into problems. You don't get the proper shine level. And... Uh, you know, if there's there's flattening agent piled up at the bottom there, then that means you know whatever you're spraying, it's gonna come out shinier than what it's supposed to, because you don't have the proper amount of flattening agents. In. So there's no buildup at the bottom there, right? That's just the stick. But uh, so we're going to pour 546 grams of this. This is going to fill up my cup all the way to the rim. Perfect. Put that away. I recommend just storing it like this and not putting it on a uh, agitating um, machine. Then you can over agitate it and then it uh, something funky happens to it. So that's the hardener D8226. That's it. You want to make sure that you are mixing it very thoroughly. I don't shake it, I, um, I probably wouldn't shake it if I were you. If you want to shake it, go for it. But I like to just mix it up. That way I don't have any bubbles because of the shaking. I can just have a nice, clear. There's that word again. Nice. If I had a dollar for every time I say nice in a video, oh, buddy. I probably wouldn't be making videos. I'll probably be making more videos actually. I'll probably be making a video every day if I had a dollar for every time I say nice. Alright. So that's very well mixed. Now we're put our sure there's no dust in there. Put a little MacGyver nest there. Filter 125 micron is what I have. I think you're supposed to do it a little bigger, but if the stuff's not flowing through that well, 
All you gotta do is just lift a little corner of the filter so the air can come through. The air can it can be a little vented. Okay. Now you see why I strain. There's some particles there, even some black ones. Somehow you never know when this stuff comes from, right? So, ha! And that's it. We have some nice matte clear coat now. This is the nice stuff. There's the not so nice stuff, and this is the nice stuff. So, a sip of coffee. Que ya pares con el café, caramba, que por eso está shaking. Some buen café. All right, got that going. We're gonna use. Um, what are we gonna use? Actually, I'm gonna be using, which I'm gonna do a review for it. I'm gonna do a review for it eventually. If you're wondering what the red lettering says in the back, it says "can't, couldn't do it," so could did it all. I'm gonna be using a my Wacom um, HD Clear. Now, I had a 1.3 initially with this clear coat gun, and I didn't like it. So that's why you never saw it in a video. Um, but uh, now I have a 1.2 setup, right? So 1.2 cap, the needle, the fluid tip, and everything. And uh, I'm really liking this. It's really good. Now, I have it, when I put it in the gun wash, I detach it, the thing. And then when I take it out, I attach it back on. Super easy to take off, you just pull back and it comes on. And then you just push it in, pull back, take off, push it in, pull back, take off, push it in. Alright, you're not fooling around, okay? It's not like this is YouTube, you need to be serious over here. Never. Alright. Let's do this. Oh, this is how my mixing room looks like. I mean, a lot of you guys do know how my mixing room looks like. If you've been here around, if you've been around for a while, and uh, you've been a loyal uh, learner and student of the Motivated Painters channel, and uh, this is it. It's a little dirty right now. I went from a vacation, and the guys made a mess out of it. It's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Um, we have the asset machine. There's a video on this. Um, I think if you just YouTube acid mix automatic dispensing machine I'm using PPG and Virobase and uh, um, yeah that's uh, pretty much it you know I'm loving doing this it's it's amazing I encourage you to go back and to watch some of my earlier videos and so you can laugh and uh, I, I, I always have fun doing these I hope you can tell I hope you that comes through the screen and uh, yeah I don't think you'll, I don't know, I don't think you should take yourself too seriously. Okay, this is flashed off. It looks great. Now we're ready for clear. Like I said, we're gonna put two medium wet coats, more like a wet coat, two wet coats. It looks awesome, I'm loving it. All right. I'm gonna be spraying at I'm gonna be spraying at 30 psi, which is another reason why I like this gun. I can actually stay, you know, with my Iwata, I, I had to get it up to 35 psi to get to a finish where I was, you know, I was okay with. So this one I can do it at 30 psi, which means it's gonna use less product, and you're gonna put less product in the air, and also the transfer efficiency of this gun is unbelievable. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna start at the bottom of the panels, then on my second coat, I'll start from the top.
pay attention to how far I am staying away from the panel and where I am going. It's very, very, very important. I think you can learn a lot just from watching that. It's about probably, I think it will maybe 8 inches away. And uh, But it all has to do with your speed. If you want to go closer, that's fine. You just have to go a little bit faster. I don't think, I don't believe, and I'm probably wrong, but I don't believe there's a right and a wrong way of spraying. You know, it's just up to you how close you want to be or how far you want to be. That's just going to have to be an adjustment of speed. All right, that's great. Now, what you want to do with that, we're going to let that flash off for like 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, depending on how it looks like. But see how shiny that is right now? That's got to go completely flat before you hammer on another coat, and that's truly, truly, truly important. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm putting it on pretty heavy. I'm putting it on the way that I want it to look. You see how shiny it is? See there on top when it meets the hood? That's pretty shiny, so that just lets you know, and that tells you that I'm putting it on there nice and thick. Nice, 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 nice. I'm going to coin that term. I gotta make that a technical term somehow. as you can see it's flattened out now we're ready for another coat this was about 17 minutes later you gotta make sure that it's completely flashed off and dull before you hammer on another coat
30 ounces. So 30 ounces, this is good to go. All done. No more clear left. All right. Super happy with this. Well, I better be happy with it because I can't polish it. <laughs> but uh, check it out. So see how shiny it is right now, right? And I don't know if you can tell, but there's a little bit of blotchiness from, from the factory. That's why I didn't want to get into, you know, putting more base up there. But what we did is looks just gorgeous. I love it. Now this will flash out. Once it's dull, then we bake it, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide it out of the way. Put it in the bake oven, but I'm not going to turn the bake oven on. I'm just going to keep it to temp, which is at 80 degrees right now. That's something very important as well. Make sure that you can control your temperature as much as possible. A few things to take away from this video, uh, boys and girls, is uh, make sure you get the water out of there. Make sure this job is perfectly clean, right? If you can wash the car before it even comes into your bay. Do that. That's the best thing to do. Um, make sure that you're cleaning the car, blowing the car off. Just go above and beyond as, as, as you normally should. And, uh, you know, make sure this job is clean. Put your base on. Make sure it dries. Put your first coat on. Put it all wet. Put it on how you want it to look. It will not look glass, okay? This stuff is not designed to look like glass. It's, supposed, it's just designed to look orange peely. But... It could be a heavy orange peel because that's the way that it looks on the vehicle, all right? This stuff is thick, so you can put it on. You know, if you need to put it on a little bit heavier, that's okay. Um, but like I always tell you guys, don't do anything I say. I'm not a PPG rep, and uh, I don't suggest you do anything that I do. <laughs> and uh, once you put on your first coat, you make sure that you let it flash off at least 15 minutes, all right? If it's still too shiny, you let it flash off 20 minutes. You gotta let it flash off, that's key. Then you come back, you apply the second coat on, put it on nice and heavy. Then you wait till that's flat before baking it. So wait even half an hour before baking it. Or if you don't have to bake it, don't bake it at all. You know, it, it doesn't matter. But the ceramic clear, that global ceramic clear is the best stuff for flat uh, panels as I as, as I have found out um, you know been trying out different clear coats so that's uh, what's worked for me I hope it works for you if you decide to try it um, and I hope that uh, you get keep getting tons of value out of this channel you know I really do care about you guys and I hope that I can continue to add value I love you God bless you so much all right Peace. Until next time, Gabriel Marino, all right? Not the Marino wool, the Marino cool. And, uh, oh, sometimes I feel like a father, you know? Doing dad jokes. Anyways, I'm gonna get this thing out of my way so I can keep going, all right? Love you. Peace. Oh! There you have it. Shine's on point. She's looking good. No base here, just a little bit of base here, a little bit of base over here, and she looks great. That's just spray mask, that's why it looks shiny. We just put spray mask on it to protect the paint, but there it is. Looks good. Love it.